Welcome back to Magnolia Bank Academy. My name is Dan Mason, and in this video, we're going to be talking about debt to income ratios. Uh, so debt to income ratio, also known as DTI, or if you're old school, and we used to call it DR, but nowadays pretty much everybody calls it DTI. It's one of the most critical pieces of qualifying for home loan and also one of the most uh, commonly misunderstood. So in this ex video, we're going to explain what a DTI is, why it matters, how to calculate it, or in maybe even how to improve it. So let's dive into the ins and outs of how uh, a DTI works. So DTI, as you could probably guess by its name, DTI is just your debts, your overall monthly expenses relative to your overall gross income, gross income before taxes. We don't look at uh, the after-tax income after they deduct taxes and, and 401k and health insurance and all that. Forget that, we always use gross income before taxes. And so your debt to income ratio, your DTI, is your overall expenses relative to your monthly income. And there's two components to DTI. You've got the front end DTI, which is your housing expenses, uh, your principal and interest, tax insurance, uh, PMI if applicable, and association dues if applicable. All of that go into calculating your front end DTI. And even if you choose to pay property tax and insurance on your own, you don't include it in the monthly payments, then the DTI is still calculated using the property tax and insurance because they still exist. You still have to pay them. You're just paying them on your own. So it's still taken into account in your front end housing debt to income ratio. The back end debt to income ratio is your overall expenses, including car loans, credit cards, student loans, any of those, uh, those monthly expenses that are appearing on your credit report added on top of your housing ratio. That's your total back end debt to income ratio. Now, the most important thing to mention here is that the back end DTI does not include things like utilities, um, auto insurance, life insurance. It's only things that are showing up on your credit report, like auto loans, credit cards, student loans. Those are taken into account in the back end DTI. We don't look at every single monthly expense, um, just what is appearing on your credit report. So let's open up the spreadsheet. So uh, if you click on the link down below the video here, you can uh, see there's the option to download this spreadsheet, open it up and uh, maybe manipulate it with me so we can cater it to your situation. So if you look at the, um, uh, the tab here, it says DTI calculator. We're gonna put in a hypothetical situation of a $400,000 loan amount, plugged in an illustrative 6.5% interest rate. Please don't read anything into that. Interest rates go up and down every single day. This rate is just listed there for illustrative purposes. Uh, contact us, we'll get you a current quote. But 6.5% uh, gives us a payment of p and of 25.28. We add in the property taxes, which are estimated at 333. Insurance, basically plug in everything. As I mentioned, PMI, if applicable, and HOA dues, homeowners association dues. If your property is in a, an area with association dues, it is absolutely taken into account in your DTI, even though you're paying it on your own. So we get your total housing expenses of 3147 here. Now let's look at the, uh, the income. We just basically put in uh, your overall monthly gross income. Again, gross before tax income is what we're gonna plug in here. So we've got borrower number one, makes a salary of $4,000, doesn't get any hourly bonus commissions over time. None of this extra um, income applies to this person. But in borrower number two, also has a $4,000 salary, but also receiving $1,000 a month in social security gross. Uh, that gives us total income for all borrowers of $9,000. So when we're calculating the front end debt to income ratio, we simply have this $9,000 in total income. We get this total housing expense over here from 3147. That means that their front end DTI is 35% of their overall monthly income. Pretty straightforward, right? And then on top of that, we've got your back end DTI. So we're plugging in things here that uh, again are on your credit report, car loans, uh, student loans, credit cards, personal loans, maybe you have some other expenses, uh, spousal support, child support, things like that might go in here. So we plug in all these overall monthly uh, expenses. And so in this hypothetical situation, we've got about $1,300 in uh, monthly expenses not related to housing. So to calculate the back end DTI, we simply look at this. We say you got your same $9,000 of income, housing expense, other expenses. The total back end DTI is 49% of their income. This 44, 47 is 49% of this $9,000 a month income. 
So why does it matter? So the debt to income ratio is one of the most critical factors in figuring out if you can qualify for the monthly payments. There's something called the ATR rule, the ability to repay. When an underwriter reviews your loan, we want to make sure that you have the ability to repay this loan. If we make a loan to where your income is insufficient to cover the monthly expenses, you don't have the ability to repay that loan, that's a loan that's going to default. So these uh, debt to income ratio limitations are there for your protection and ours to make sure that you're, you're getting a home loan that you can afford and that's not going to uh, result in some type of default like a foreclosure. So let's look at the different DTI guidelines because they do vary from loan type to loan type. So with a conventional loan, um, we can go up to a 50% back-end DTI. All of this listed here is your back-end DTI when you have six months worth of reserves. What do we mean by reserves? Reserves are money in the bank, a cushion to fall back on. If you have six months worth of payments, six months worth of this mortgage payment um, in the bank, we that is sufficient cushion to fall back on, we'll get a little bit more liberal with the underwriting guidelines, get a little bit more flexible. So if we take 3,147, Multiply it by six months, that is 18882 Let's call it 19 grand. If you've got $19,000 or more in a 401k, IRA, checking, savings, or the sum of all of them, it doesn't have to be one account, it just, you know, as long as the money exists, then we'll go with a higher DTI of up to 50% um, in when you've got six months reserves. If you don't have that cushion to fall back on, DTI gets a little bit tighter, 45% without those six months reserves. So conventional loans um, obviously have the tightest DTI. They, they are the, uh, the loans designed for A paper borrowers. They have a little bit tighter uh, guidelines in terms of DTI, a little bit tighter credit requirements. Conventional loans are your A paper type borrower loans. FHA and even VA get more flexible. With an FHA loan, we can go up to a 59% uh, back-end DTI with an automated underwriting approval. You may be saying, what the heck is automated underwriting? Well, we have a whole video that's dedicated to automated underwriters. So click on our video links below. You can uh, check that out, but let me give you a quick high level overview. Automated underwriting is a computer underwriting system. And so this computer underwriter is able to analyze your income, your credit, your assets, every aspect of your ability to qualify. And it'll issue a full blown loan prequalification for us right up front. So it'll say, yes, with their income, their credit, they qualify for this loan amount, this interest rate, and this much monthly payment. It really nails down all the details for us right up front. So the automated system is, uh, is designated by both Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They each have their own. Fannie Mae's system is called DU or desktop underwriter. Uh, Freddie Mac system is called uh, LPA, Loan Product Advisor. So we run it through DU or LPA, and the system then uh, issues that, that automated approval. And if it likes it, we can go all the way up to a 59% DTI. But sometimes the automated underwriting system, it catches something it doesn't like. Maybe there's something, an old collection that's reporting goofy, some bad data that's on the, the credit, or maybe it's just it, it's analyzing the risk parameters and it, it just doesn't like it. So we need to go old school and we need to go with a manual underwrite to where an actual person reviews the credit, reviews the income, reviews it and makes a, a, a judgment call on whether the, the, the loan is qualified or not. That is a manual underwrite and a manual underwrite has a little bit tighter DTI. We can go up to 50% back end DTI if the automated system doesn't like it. VA is uh, virtually identical, same thing, 59% um, back-end DTI with automated underwriting, 50% uh, with a front-end manual underwrite, as long as you have the uh, proper credit scores to qualify as well. So one of the things, so let's say in this hypothetical example, so let's say we're doing a refinance, uh, and, and this person here has got a back-end debt-to-income ratio. Let's say they've also got uh, another uh, $200 a month in personal loans. You can see the back end debt to income ratio now went to 51%. That's higher than the 50% 50, 50 allowed. They no longer qualify. Well, the good news is if this was, for example, a cash out refinance, what we do is we look at the DTI at the end of the loan, not at the beginning. So let's say we're pulling $50,000 out in cash and we're paying off some bills and we're going to pay off these student loans and that those payments are going to go to zero. The credit cards go to zero. These personal loans go to zero. The, and this other personal loan down here goes to zero. Now all they're left with is their two car loans and a new mortgage. You can see their back end debt to income ratio is now below that 50%. 
Now they qualify, and as long as they've got the reserves, as we just discussed, and now the loan works because we look at it as a loan will be at the end of the loan, not at the beginning. So we can manipulate that DTI. We can do some things to uh, to try and drive down the, the, the DTI. Another thing that you can do, we can often explore buying down the interest rate. So let's say the um, uh, all of this, we need to get the DTI below. They don't have reserves. We're at 46%. They don't have our six months worth of reserves. Well, we need to get over here and we need to do something to try and drive down the front end debt to income ratio. So let's say they bought down the interest rate to 6.25%. Really close. We're really close to that 45% DTI. Maybe we need to buy it down to 6.125%. Boom, there it is, 44.99%. We can get them to qualify. We just move the DTI around. We can also do the same thing by playing with the loan amount. Maybe we put in 390 loan amount instead of 400. Take the rate back up to six and a quarter. That also accomplished the same goal, got us under this 50% DTI. So this is something that we uh, uh, can explore on a case by case basis, but DTI is a critical component of qualifying. You have to have the ability to repay. You got to pass that ATR rule. Hopefully the spreadsheet will help you calculate your own DTI. Uh, we of course will do it for you as well. Any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out, but hopefully uh, DTI has been somewhat demystified and you have a better understanding. Please check out all of our other videos on everything from automated underwriting to mortgage insurance to conventional versus FHA, whole lot of stuff here to explain the ins and outs of how home loans work so that you walk into home ownership uh, with your eyes wide open. Thank you very much. Have a great day.